my turn. True believers, be prepared to superpower your knowledge of the comics industry. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down the five most illuminating things you probably never knew about the publishing house that built the Avengers. These aren't facts about the feats of your favorite heroes, but specifically about Marvel as a company, and all the uncanny years they've spent churning out incredible comics. When I was at Marvel, our whole place was about this big. Number 5. Marvel has some random crossovers. Yeah, we all want to know who'd win in a war between the Justice League and the X-Men, but I think what we all really want to know is what does Aunt May's cooking taste like? Well, chefs at the Hong Kong restaurant Bow Innovation teamed up with Marvel for a superhero-inspired menu in November 2015. Fans of Black Widow enjoyed bone marrow fritters with beluga caviar, chased with a shot of vodka. Peter Parker inspired a delicious steamed foie gras with spider crab. If for some reason you'd rather drive like a hero than eat like one, Kia recently unveiled their new X-Men-inspired Sportage. Unfortunately, even though it's painted to mimic the appearance of the shape-shifting mystique, the Kia does not transform into a better car. Oh, snap! Number 4. Stanley Media vs. Marvel You know, I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said. The iconic comic creator is synonymous with Marvel, but that hasn't stopped his former company from trying to sue Marvel over merchandising and movie rights. Stan Lee Media, which was an internet-based entertainment portal that formed in 1998, but that Stan Lee later abandoned, took on Disney in court for a whopping $5.5 billion. They've tried more than once to claim that Stan Lee actually assigned the rights to all of his characters to them but the case was dismissed pretty quickly. Jack Kirby is the king of comic books. Jack Kirby did everything. Jack Kirby, co-creator of many Marvel characters, also tried to gain back control of his assets, but ultimately the judge ruled that only Marvel owns Marvel. We won. Number three, Marvel is backgrounding Fox's properties. I have a paycheck due this week. And You're a month late again. Again. Marvel was facing dire straits in 1996 after filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and toy company executive Avi Arad led the charge to save Marvel by selling the film rights to some properties while acquiring others. In the end, 20th Century Fox came away with the rights to X-Men and Fantastic Four, and now it seems that Marvel is slowly pushing those characters into the background, as if to stick it to Fox. They've dropped some major mutant characters from posters and merchandise, cancelled the Fantastic Four comic franchise, and their new X-Men comics seem dead set on keeping mutants out of the spotlight. Where are the mutants? Marvel denies any such thing, but it may be a power move to lower the value of the properties so that they can reacquire them from 20th century. If only it was as easy as waving your hand and whispering, no more Fox. Number 2. Marvel was the first major publisher to ditch the comics code. Ah, comics. Depicting monsters, crime, and scantily clad women to poison the minds of young readers everywhere. Thank goodness Dr. Frederick Wortham, a psychologist, wrote Seduction of the Innocent in 1954 to warn parents about the corrupting influence of comic books. <sighs> the alarmist polemic eventually led the comic industry to voluntarily censor themselves under the Comics Code Authority. Marvel was the first major publisher to drop the seal altogether in 2001. They debuted their R-rated Max imprint shortly after, even though Stan Lee didn't seem to approve of the new stories. Marvel may have been the first major publisher to ditch the code, but all others have followed suit since, and the code is now defunct. Number 1. Marvel went to court to prove mutants are not human. Is Wolverine human? What about Beast? Since custom tariffs were higher on dolls depicting humans than on toys depicting monsters or animals, Marvel subsidiary Toy Biz Inc. did what any business would do for their bottom line. They went to court to argue that characters like Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and most notably the X-Men did not represent humans, but are, in fact, monsters, and so deserved a tax cut. <laughs> you serious? After years of literature defending mutant rights, you gotta wonder where Magneto is when you need him. We are the future. 
We are the ones who will inherit this earth. In the end, a judge agreed that every single one of them were monsters. You want society to accept you, but you can't even accept yourself. So, what do you think? Are mutants monsters? I guess so. And is Marvel trying to lower the value of its titles so that they can buy them back? No doubt about it. For more superpowered top tens and seductive top fives, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. All right, good job, guys. Uh, let's just not come in tomorrow. Let's just take a day. Yeah.